In this section, we are going to talk about the Pasan, P O I S S O N, probability distribution. The random variable big X, or X is a random variable. Remember, random variable counts things. So when I say find the probability that big X is equal to little x, well, little x should be some number, but in general, it's x. Maybe it's 5. If big X counts the number of heads, then this is asking, what's the probability that the number of heads is 5? Okay, little x is to be filled in. The probability that big X is little x is mu to the x e to the negative mu all over x factorial, where mu is the mean, which can also be calculated by np. It is the mean. It is what you would expect. It's the expected value. So, suppose I tell you that the probability of a homicide in a given city is 116 out of 365. What that tells me is that this is 116. See, I don't know why the P didn't come out. The probability of a homicide is that. So this is given. In a given city, the probability of a homicide is 116 over 365. That means on a given, on average, is 116 homicides per year. Okay. And the question is, find the probability of zero homicides. Now, how do you know that this is Poisson? Well, when it came to binomial, you tossed the coin ten times. The number of heads, there's a finite number of heads you may have gotten. Either you got zero heads or one head or two heads or three heads or four heads all the way up to 10 heads. When it comes to homicide, it can go on and on. One death, two, zero death, or one death, or three homicides, or four homicides, or five homicides, or 50,000 homicides, or 3,211,000 homicides. One might argue, well, what are you talking about? There's a finite number of people in the world, and you know th this is true. But it just goes on ridiculous amounts. Zero homicides. This is what X is. X counts the number of homicides. And the probability of a homicide, that's mu. That's mu. It's the average number of homicides on a Per day. Now, what I meant to write is, what's the probability of zero, zero homicides on a randomly selected day? And we use the formula here. We need to insert mu, and we need to insert x, and e is a special number, just like pi. So, mu is... Now, it, it turns out that if you did the division here, you get 0.3178. So you want zero homicide, it's mu, 3178 to their x, which is zero, times e to the negative mu, which is 0.3178, divided by zero factorial. By definition, zero factorial is one. Dividing by one, you don't have to do. Any number to the zero is one. 
1 times this is just that, e to the negative 3178. And that's the exact answer. The answer I would like to see if you must know. But the decimal representation would be approximately 0.728. If we wanted the probability of one homicide on a randomly selected day, x is 1. So it's mu to the x times e to the negative mu, which is still 3178, divided by 1 factorial, which is 1. Don't bother dividing by 1. 3178 to the 1 is 3178. 0.3178 times this number. You already have that number in your calculator. And it probably has more decimal places than just 3. Take that number in your calculator, multiply it by 0.3178, and there will be a good approximation to the answer. This is what I got when I worked it out. You can have a gazillion number of homicides on a given day. That's the Poisson distribution. Suppose that I tell you that the probability of an earthquake on a randomly selected day, I should have said that on the last problem, is 0.93. Okay. That we call a CEF. If you have more than one er earthquake on a day, they might call it one earthquake. So, in a given year, there's a nine, there's a point nine three chance of having something. I'm not happy about this number. Well, there's a 93, you know, yeah. how about I reword this? How about we reword this? There are 93 earthquakes, 93 earthquakes in 100 years. Excuse me. And we want to know what's the probability that there's zero earthquakes in a randomly selected year, or the probability that there is one earthquake in a randomly selected year. Well, we know that the probability that x, which counts the number of earthquakes, equaling this value, whether it's x or y or k or 7, is equal to mu to the x, e to the negative mu, over x factorial. You insert the value for x, and whatever goes in here, it also goes here and there. Now, there are 93 earthquakes. And the probability 
that it happens in any one given year is 1 out of 100. So mu is NP, which is 93 out of 100, or 0.93. So, you, you could say the probability of an earthquake is 0.93. So, we want zero earthquakes. That's the value for little x. That is what little x is. So, reading off the formula, it's mu, which is 0.93, mu to the x times e to the negative mu, divided by 0 factorial, which is 1. This is multiplication, and 0.93 to the 0 is 1. Don't bother multiplying by 1. This is 1 in the bottom. Don't, divide it, don't bother dividing by 1. So the answer is whatever this is. That's the exact answer. If you're taking my class, it's exactly what I would want to see. This is approximately... 39455. If you want one earthquake, well, this mu, which is 0.93 to the x, which is 1, mu to the x, e to the negative mu, over 1 factorial, which is 1. Don't bother dividing by 1. Don't bother raising to the 1, because it's just 0.93. When you multiply 0.93 by this, well, this is about 39,455. This is almost all. You're taking 93% of this number. That is of that number. Well, if you want 93% is almost all of it. If you want all of the 0.39,455, you should get around 3,6. In fact, you get 0.3669. The probability of an earthquake is 0.93. The number of earthquakes could be 20 billion. There's no reason why, in theory at least, there can't be a billion earthquakes in a year. Whenever that number can go on and on and on and on and on. You use binomial. Suppose you want to know, find the probability that one has three accidents in a given year if, so, like I said, find the probability of having three accidents in a given year if the mean number of accidents per year is two. Your average number of accidents is two. So, mu is 2. And the number of accidents is 3. So the probability of 3 accidents in a random selected year in a random selected year is, well, remember, that's mu and that's x. It's mu to the x, which is 3, mu to the x times e to the mu divided by x factorial, 3 factorial. And it's negative 2, excuse me. This is 8, this is 6, and you know, this is e to the negative 2. You can crank that out, for example, this is 4 thirds. And if you work this out, you should get approximately 0.9.
0.14037. And to know that's about right, you have 1 in the third times e to the negative 2. Well, e to the negative 2, I can put it on the bottom. Now, e is between e being about 2.718, it's between 2 and 3. So if you square everything, it's in between, e squared is between 4 and 9. And since this e is closer to 3, the answer is closer to 9. Let's call it 8. Let's call it 8. e squared is 8. So 4 goes into 8 2 times, you get a 6, which is about 0 0.16, which is very, very close to what we got. So it's reasonable. Always, always, always make sure your answer sounds reasonable. It amazes me how students would do 0 0.312 times 0 0.721. Those numbers are less than 1 but they'll get 3,213, etc. 124.1. 1. 3,213,124.1. 1. That's absurd. If you multiply numbers less than 1, you don't get millions. In fact, you get less than 1. Okay, here's another problem that I made up. Possibly you might enjoy this one. Of course, I'm not talking about you. And it, suppose that the probability that you cut class in a randomly selected day in a randomly selected day is well actually what I meant to ask is what's the probability that you cut five classes in a random week. In a random week. What's the probability that you cut five classes in a random week? And you're given the probability, excuse me, given the average. The average number of classes you cut in a week is 2. So what's the probability that you cut 5 classes? Well, it'll probably be a little bit unlikely because your average is 2. Now, of course, there's a finite number of classes that you can take. But you can do this by... Uh, binomial. There are the average of classes you cut is 2 and you want x to be 5. x is 5. So the probability that you cut 5 classes in a randomly selected week is mu to the x times e to the negative mu divided by x factorial. 2 to the fifth is 32 times e to the negative 2 over 120. Now, I claim that's 0 0.0395. About 4 over 100. Well, 32 over 120. Now I can move the e to the negative 2 in the bottom. Now that's between uh, 4 and 9. If I use 4 or I use 9. 
my answer should be around there. In fact, once again, let's use 8. That's what we used last time. 8 goes into 32 4 times. 4 goes into 4 once. It goes into 12 3 times. So 120 30 times. So I get 1 over 30. If I triple top and bottom, that's 3 out of 90. Well, I make 3 baskets out of 90. If I do a little bit more to 100, well, the last 10 I'll make some. So maybe I'll make 3.3, .3, which is 0 .033, which is fairly close to what we're getting. I'm not saying this is better. I'm, I just approximated this stuff. Make sure my answer isn't completely off the wall. Sometimes, instead of using Poisson distribution, or thinking of it, of a problem as a Poisson distribution, you can think of it also as binomial. Suppose you're playing the lottery. The lottery says, pick a number from 1 to 10,000. That is, there are 10,000 different numbers. And if you pick the right number, if you pick the winning number, you win. Okay, now, like always, you play it as often as the game is played. That is, if the game runs from Monday to Sunday, you can only play one time because that's one experiment. After the game ends, you can play it again next week. After it ends, you can play the week after. Play once a week. Now that's, on, that's under the assumption that the game doesn't last two weeks because I don't want you to buy two lottery tickets for the same drawing. One drawing, one lottery ticket. You play once a week. The question is, what is the probability of winning exactly once in a year? In a year. Now you might argue that this, and you could have argued this with the other ones, that some of the other ones, this is binomial. Either you win or you don't win. <sighs> okay. So if we think of it as binomial, we have the combination part, the success probability success to a power times the probability of failure to a power. Now, we want to win once, but we want to win. So success in this case is winning. Out of the 10,000 numbers, only one of them is a winner. So we have 1 over 10,000 chance of winning and 9,999 out of 10,000 chances of losing. We want to win one time in the year, so the remaining 364 days, we're just begging to lose. And from the 365 days, we want to choose one to be a winning day for us. And if you work this out, you will get to four decimal places this number. And what we did is fine, except we use binomial distribution. If the problem said specifically use percent distribution, I mean, if your teacher wants to be 100% fair, you should get zero credit because you didn't answer the question at all. Nothing in this box, and this is where the work is, nothing in this box is needed to use the, the percent distribution. None of it. 
Well, maybe the probability of winning. So now, you know, X counts the number of winnings. I can say winning exactly once in a year. I'm just going to say one. So X is one. Now, now down here we're using the Poisson. Now mu is the expected number of times to win. Well, you expect to win one in 10,000. You expect to win one in 10,000 times. There's 10,000 numbers. You expect to win one of them. If there were, if, you, if you're rolling a die in the six outcomes and you get to pick one number, you wouldn't have any problem saying, oh, I have a one in 10 chance of winning. I mean, imagine a wheel that has 10,000 numbers on them, 10,000 balls in the wheel with 10,000 numbers, and you spin the wheel, you spin the wheel, and then you let some balls come out. You let one, you let one ball come out. And whatever that ball is, if it's this ball, which is number 737, well, that's the winning number for tonight. So one in 10,000 chance that the ball, let's suppose that's the ball with your number, and all the balls are the same size. The chance that that ball comes down at the bottom is one in 10,000. That's the average. You expect to win one in 10,000 times. However, I do have one slight error. We're playing this game every day of the week. Excuse me. Yeah, every day of the year. So we have 365 out of 10,000 chances of winning, which happens to be 0 0.0365. Move the decimal in four spaces, 0 0.0365. So the probability of winning, so that's mu and x is one. So the probability of winning exactly once in a randomly selected year is mu to the x times e to the negative mu divided by x factorial. One factorial, don't bother by, don't bother with it. Anything, anything to the first power is just to anything. 0 0.0365 times this number, so I didn't make a mistake calculating it, is 0.0352 to four decimal places. The four decimal places, they were exact. But if we went out to more space places, their binomial formula will be exact to those number of spaces or places. The passant will be an est estimate. They will start deviating after a while. Which one is exactly right? The binomial, the passant is an approximation. Okay, that finishes the section on Poisson distribution.